Hello, everybody. This is uh, 4.9 antiderivatives. So we'll, this is a section that will transition us into chapter five, which is about uh, integration. And uh, let's talk about these antiderivatives. Um, so in, in, each, in some cases, uh, let's, in some cases, when you try to find a function f whose derivative is known. So this is a reverse of what we have been doing. Uh, we were taking, we were having a, a derivative, for example, uh, a function, and we take its derivative or first one or second one. But now if, we, if you know the, the derivative, um, and you are interested in finding the function uh, or the original function, then uh, that's called antiderivative. So definition of function f is called an antiderivative of f and on the interval i, if f prime of x equal f of x for all x in that, all right? So uh, a simple example, if you have x squared, uh, it's not difficult to discover that an antiderivative of f um, is uh, one third x cubed. Why? Because if you one third x cubed, if you do the derivative, you have the multiple, then you do the power rule on this three uh, x squared, this three with this three simplify and you get x squared. So x squared uh, can come from this, right? Uh, but the function also, if this function is, let's say, plus 100, when you do this derivative, you're going to do uh, 100 derivative is 0. And so they, will, they both lead to the same answer. So it could be 100, it could be 1,000, it could be 1, it could be any number. Right, um, so uh, both f and g are an antiderivatives to that. So, um, so if we do one third uh, x cubed f prime, will also lead to this. So they are both antiderivatives here. So indeed, any function of the form plus c. So uh, any one third x cubed plus c is, uh, in which c is a constant, is an antiderivative of f. So let's use the following theorem. If f is an antiderivative of f on an interval, then the most general antiderivative is f of x plus c, where c is, a con is an arbitrary constant, right? And here uh, you can uh, look at uh, different examples. And as you see, they all have the same slope, right? Um, so let's look at um, some functions. Uh, for example, the antiderivative of sine of x is negative cosine of x. Uh, why? Because if you differentiate uh, sine of x, uh, right? Uh, you're gonna get uh, uh, you're gonna you're gonna need negative cosine of x. Uh, if you differentiate negative cosine of x, you'd get sine of x, because usually cosine of x derivative uh, is negative sine of x, right? So if you have sine of x, that means uh, if you have sine of x, that means you need a negative there, right? Uh, so that's, so the antiderivative uh, g of x is negative cosine of x plus c. Uh, the common thing to for, is to forget this uh, constant in the in general form. So we shouldn't forget this when we do it as well integrals, uh, uh, when they are in, in general form. And we'll talk more about uh, that when we get to it and of course, it goes away with uh, definite uh, types. Um, so let's look at uh, the second example. Um, 
which is one over X. We know the antiderivative of this is ln X, but of course this has to be positive. So uh, we should say uh, there is an antiderivative ln X as long as this argument is positive. So we will use the absolute value on it. So ln uh, X with the absolute value of X, the argument has to be kind of positive there and of course can't be zero. Uh, so the general antiderivative of F is uh, ln X plus C1 if X is greater than zero, strictly greater than zero, or, you, you know, we've done this few times where we use these uh, negative X, that's the definition of absolute value. If X is negative, strictly negative, all right. So one way doing this few times, we can realize a pattern if it's like the power rule that you can f reverse it to find the end derivative by doing xn plus one divided by n plus one plus c. All right, so um, for some, uh, just like you had with differentiation, you had the derivatives, uh, the common ones and this and that on tables. Here is a, a, a table that would simplify uh, some of them. So for example, the, uh, if you have the sum, you can do the same thing for the sum. If you have the, the X power N, you can do this. And of course, remember if you ask for a general form, these come with plus C, right? Uh, one over X, the ln X plus C, uh, EX comes from EX plus C. Um, this uh, exponential one, cosine uh, is sine, uh, sine x, negative cosine x plus c, a secant square uh, comes uh, from the extension x plus c, and so forth. So uh, the table you have, you reverse it, or the formula sheet you have, you can reverse it. Uh, so, uh, hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. So each formula in the table is true because of the derivative and of course to the idea of the constant there. So uh, the antiderivatives, if you have an equation that involves the antiderivatives of a function, it's called a differential equation. So when you hear about differential equations, that's equations that involve the derivatives of a function. The general solution of these uh, di differential equations involve arbitrary constants. However, there may be some extra conditions like boundary conditions and initial conditions or some uh, other information that may allow you to find that constant, right? So let's do some examples here. What I will do uh, based on the homework is um, uh, there are some examples in the homework that are just a review, like find the derivative. So we did all that. These are like review examples, um, practice. And I'll, I'll, I'll work on the antiderivative ones. And uh, a nice one that we did in the past is uh, we take the position then uh, let's call it, let's say S. Then you, f it, you find the first derivative and that's a velocity. You find the second derivative and that's acceleration. Right. So now if you know the acceleration you're going to do the antiderivative to find the velocity. If you have the velocity, you're going to do the antiderivative to find the position. So let's look at this particle that moves in a straight line, uh, which also called the rectilinear. Uh, uh, this, uh, 
motion and has acceleration given as uh, AT, uh, 12 T plus four, it's initially, its initial velocity is uh, V zero uh, is negative five. So negative five centimeter per second uh, at the T zero and the initial displacement uh, was uh, eight centimeters at uh, that initial time equals zero. Find its function S of T. So uh, we know that V prime of T uh, is this uh, acceleration, which is 12 T plus four. So V prime of T is 12 times t squared over two. So we're going to reverse it. Um, so you're gonna take which one that if you differentiate, you get 12 t, right? So uh, like the formula there, n plus one, you, you divide by n plus one. So uh, you get, uh, and the four came from four t, you know, four x, the derivative is four plus c. Uh, so it's a 60 square plus 40 plus C. Uh, we know that, um, we know that V of zero, um, uh, maybe should be there, um, or V of zero for velocity, we can just call it that. So I should remove this part here. Yeah, so because V prime is 12 T plus four, uh, which is the acceleration, right? And uh, so uh, once uh, I do the antiderivative, it's V, uh, the velocity, and uh, that's that. Uh, so V of zero is negative five. Um, so uh, let's use it in this formula, V of zero is a six. Now this is all zero. Uh, it's negative five. So, so C, the constant that uh, we don't know, this arbitrary constant in this case, uh, it's negative five. So V of T is 60 squared plus 40 plus C. All right, so we're going to take antiderivative uh, to find, uh, uh, maybe we'll fold that, we should just show, say that we know that uh, V of T is S prime of T, right? So uh, uh, anti uh, uh, derivative or or anti differentiation. So maybe the process we should use the process. Then uh, we'll have S of t is same thing we're going to do for uh, t squared is gonna be t cubed over three. Then for t is gonna be t squared over two. And c is t plus d. So, uh, you know, uh, the antiderivative of this constant is gonna be ct plus d. Uh, plus the new arbitrary constant for this anti-differentiation. So it's gonna be two T cubed plus two T squared. And we found that C is negative five, right? So negative five T plus C. Uh, now we know uh, that uh, Uh, this displacement 
is eight centimeters at the uh, initial uh, time for the experiment or something. So the initial displacement is that. So we will use it. So D equal eight. And uh, that gives us the final answer. So 2t cubed plus 2t squared minus 5t plus 8. Uh, let's do, and so this is number, actually this is number three. And let's do number seven, uh, f of x, uh, three over five minus four over x. And here x uh, positive. So yeah, so uh, anti-differentiation to this, uh, this is a constant, so it has to be x. And this is four times one over x, so that's gonna be the uh, natural log of x, right? Um, plus c. All right, next let's do eight. Uh, G of T is six plus T square all over the square root of T. So we can maybe split them. And that's uh, so the anti differentiation. Uh, you're going to do the same. So um, uh, we need to do um, uh, the same formula, uh, negative one half plus one and divide by that. Or before that, let's do this here. Combine these exponents. So you'll have um, The one half and this the three halves, right? So now we can do the antiderivative on that. So one half divided by one half uh, plus uh, divide the three halves plus the five halves divided by five halves plus C, C. and um, that's a 12, six times a two over one. And that's two thirds and that's two fifths. Uh, let's do nine um, f of x is six ex 
minus four um, hyperbolic cosine. Well, this one is just, uh, um, you can also start with the C in general form so you don't forget it, you forget that. And that's just, uh, these are just as we have seen. Okay, no big deal there. Um, let's look at 11. Now we have the second derivative equals to 12x plus sine x. So the first derivative is going to be um, 12 times x squared divided by 2. Then uh, the, the sine comes from the cosine x. But the derivative of cosine x is negative sine, so we need to use a negative, so this ends up being positive uh, plus c. Uh, now we need to do, um, so let's call it f of x capital F. And um, once we have this, now we want uh, Uh, f of x, so it depends if, uh, if it's another g of x or something. So you see that a function is also that way, the derivative. So if we go uh, one step back to get to the function, um, uh, this is uh, here simplified as 6x squared minus cosine x plus c. So the six is there. Now we're going to work on the cube. And that's gonna stay as negative sine x because negative sine is derivative is negative cosine. And you see the C it now is gonna take the x because the derivative of Cx is C uh, plus D. So two. So the original function that we're looking for is 2x cubed minus sine x plus cx plus d. And this is the general formula. And if some other information is available, we'll be able to identify c and d. Uh, similarly for 12, we just we have some uh, trig functions there. Uh, sine of theta and cosine of theta. And we know that f of zero is two and f prime of zero is three. So one step back is um, negative cosine plus sine plus a C. Uh, let's use the f prime of zero three in it, right? And that's gonna give us and uh, cosine theta, we, uh, cosine zero. Cosine zero and sine of zero. We know these values and we substitute them and um, we get four. So that's a zero and that's negative one. So the first derivative is negative cosine theta plus sine theta plus four. So now we step back, we get f of theta. Um, negative sine theta minus cosine theta. Plus four theta. 
plus the D. And we know that F of zero is two. So you're going to do the same. Uh, we get D equal three. So we substitute zero there and we find equal to the two and we'll end up with equal to three. Okay, so um, F of theta is negative sine theta minus uh, cosine theta plus four theta plus three. Okay, thank you.